Straw Dogs, Thoughts on Humans and Other Animals by John Gray. Is our belief in human progress only an illusion? Quote, Modern humanism is the faith that through science humankind can know the truth and so be free. But if Darwin's theory of natural selection is true, this is impossible. The human mind serves evolutionary success, not truth. Hi and welcome to the book lab, I'm Bjorn and this is the place where we bring you the best book recommendations when it comes to philosophy, psychology, human nature and human potential. And today we're talking about Straw Dogs, a book by John Gray, which is a brutal attack on the humanist belief in human progress. The idea that with scientific knowledge combined with technology, humans can free themselves from the limits that frame other animals and in that way we can be masters of our own destiny. Gray argues that that is not the case. We are just like other animals. We are driven by Darwinistic forces that only really care about the reproduction of our genes. And on top of that, uh, Gray adds that our faith in humanity and our faith in progress is just a secular version of the Christian faith, promising salvation for each and all. Quote, Darwin showed that humans are like other animals. Humanist claims they are not. Humanists insist that by using our knowledge we can control our environment and flourish as never before. In affirming this, they renew one of Christianity's most dubious promises, that salvation is open to all. The humanist belief in progress is only a secular version of this Christian faith. This book is divided into several short philosophical essays on different topics and it was a book that kept me up at night with its uh, uncomfortable, uh, provocative and harsh pessimism. It was a book that I really couldn't put down. Quote, Humans cannot live without illusion. For the men and women of today, an irrational faith in progress may be the only antidote to nihilism. The idea of progress is only the longing for immortality given a techno-futuristic twist. Sanity is not found here, nor in the moth-eaten eternities of the mystics. Reading Straw Dogs and Civilized to Death before that, uh, two books that both uh, talk about this human faith in progress and talks about progress as an illusion, got me thinking about how progress and technical advancements have impacted my life recently and one event came to mind. As you might know by now, I work in the video games industry creating worlds. I work as a 3D artist, I build worlds in which the games are set in and one of the main limitations we have as game artists is that we, the hardware only allow us to show so much in one image. And a big part of the work for us is to optimize our contents, our assets, our props so that they are efficient and run efficiently on the hardware. And we often struggle with maxing out, right? Uh, so we come up with all kinds of tricks and workarounds and there's a lot of work going into optimizing our content. In short, we spend a lot of time trying to figure out not only how to make things look good visually, but also how to make it friendly for the graphic cards and the processor to compute. And that's a lot of work. A recent technical advancement, a huge leap in software and hardware capabilities, made it possible for us to suddenly have almost infinite details in the environment, uh, environments that we construct. And that means that all that time we spent into optimizing, all that work, the need for that work disappeared almost overnight. And that was about almost 50% of the work that we were doing. Finally, algorithms and machines had lessened the burden of our labors. Right? Right? No, of course not. Instead, the expectations for visual qualities for video games went up and we had a as much or not maybe even more to do. New expectations were born and it's like this with all um, productivity boosts that we get, whether it's from a new app or a new way of working. Uh, instead of giving us more free time, it just raises the expectation of how much you can get out of a workday, for instance. So what is progress? What is the aim of progress? It feels sometimes like as we progress and we technology advances, 
the more things change, the more they stay the same. So what to make of all of this? If progress is a myth and humans are just animals among other animals, are we then doomed to nihilism? For it is a harsh truth and I'm getting more and more convinced that the truth about the human condition might actually be in line with what John Gray describes. In that case, I'm, I'd rather make up my own meaning. Uh, I'd rather find an illusion that is strong enough to sustain myself than to yield to a cynical and nihilistic truth. Quote, the human condition is one thing human well-being another. There is no predetermined harmony between the two. The examined life may not be worth living. Maybe what we have to do is that we have to choose a level of delusion that works for us, uh, a delusion that is strong enough to keep us from despair in face of the terrible truth. I loved it and I hated it. This book is probably the most impactful book that I've read this year, uh, to be honest. Uh, but I'm not sure if anyone is better off by reading it unless you're looking for sleepless nights and existential angst. It might be the case that we're all doomed on a collective level in the end, I don't know, but I still think it makes sense uh, on an individual level to strive towards what's good regardless of what conclusions you take from this book. And I won't be able to cover all aspects of this book in this review. It has a lot uh, of things that I would like to talk about but uh, yeah if you if what you heard about the book so far piqued your interest then definitely check this one out and I would like to end with recommending a few books that uh, could work as an antidote to, war, to a meaningless existence. But first, don't forget to subscribe, like and share this channel. It really helps the channel and it helps me reach more people with great books. Um, the two books that I want to talk about are... First out we have William James' book, uh, The Varieties of Religious Experience, where he explores the value of the subjective value of religious experience and it talks about the phenomena he called the religious attitude which is that you have faith in a supreme order and faith in a higher power and this is a way uh, that can bring fulfillment to your life and secondly we have flow and i have two different versions of this one actually. Um, Flow by Mihaly, Sikhsenk Mihaly. It talks about flow um, and optimal experience. And there are eight components which um, contributes to a state of flow. This is a st state of effortlessness. Uh, this, your sense of time disappear. It's the perfect balance between challenge and skill. Uh, I have done an in-depth review of this one. Flow is definitely something you want to seek out in life uh, if you want to escape uh, the harsh reality that Mr. John, Mr. John Gray describes. Shit, I'm getting tired. And uh, it's something, if you know how it works, you can apply it to very mundane activities such as chores and, and work you might not even like. So learning about flow can add a lot of uh, fulfillment and happiness to your life. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. I'm back next week with more reviews. Until then, we are out.